Thank you. Okay, we're going to get started. I'd like to uh, welcome everyone to a public hearing uh, on a proposed moratorium here in the town of Monroe. And uh, the purpose of the moratorium, the temporary moratorium, uh, is to give the town board an opportunity uh, to review our comprehensive uh, land use plan. Uh, particularly as it relates to areas of the town where we're experiencing significant growth uh, and to see uh, and ensure that we have the necessary uh, regulations in place when it comes to uh, the use of uh, uh, town uh, sewer or wastewater infrastructure. And with that, I'd like to ask the clerk to read the notice of the public hearing into the record. Town of Monroe notice of public hearing to consider adoption of local law. Notice is hereby given pursuant to section 20 of the municipal home rule law of the state of Bemar for the public hearing will be held by the town board of the town of Monroe on December 21st, 2021 at 6 p.m. at the town municipal complex located at 351 Reynolds Road, Monroe, New York. For the purpose of considering the adoption of local law number seven of 2021, if adopted, local law number seven of 2021 would add chapter 125 entitled a temporary moratorium on building permits, subdivision review, site plan review, or other review of subdivisions of more than 10 residential dwellings located within one half mile of an existing sewer main within the town of Moreau. Written comments on local law number one, excuse me. Local law number seven of 2021 can be submitted to the town clerk up and through the time of the public hearing. A copy of proposed local law number seven of 2021 can be obtained at the Monroe Town Municipal Complex and on the town's website. It was published on December 11th. Thank you very much, Leanne. And, uh, Councillor, have you received a uh, comment back from the County Planning Board? Uh, yes, we received a letter today that the County Planning Board for you tomorrow. Thank you. So at uh, this time, uh, I'll be opening up the uh, public hearing to public comment. Uh, just a reminder that by regulation, you will have five minutes to uh, address the board. Please state your name uh, and address uh, for the record. And uh, also a reminder, uh, the town board is in receipt of all four correspondence on this particular public hearing. Uh, so it's not necessary to uh, read those documents back into the record, or uh, uh, if you'd like, you could uh, uh, summarize those comments, uh, and that would probably be a more efficient use of your time. Uh, so at this time, uh, I do not have a list of those that are signed up to speak. I don't have it. All right, so without that, uh, I'll ask if anybody wishes to be heard. Thank you. Travis Mitchell with the property at 16 Woodward Road. I spent some time over the last week or so reviewing the uh, document for the root time supervision. As you know, there's, there's a lot of history there and a lot of documents. Project started back in 2008, 2009, with Tim Burley was the engineer at the time. Um, Tim and the town board wrestled with a project for almost 10 years that they tried to. Uh, develop something that would gain support of the proposed district. In the engineering reports, there were public hearings, there were referendums, and ultimately a project could not be found uh, that would work um, by team and the board at the time. The town board then brought um, Laverge in to take a look at what had been done and to look at some recommendations going forward. And uh, Don Rose issued a letter to the town board in February, suggesting that if the town wanted to try and get a project passed, they remove the residential properties from the proposed sewer district. The town board talked about that for a few months, unanimously decided that, that would be the approach that it would take. Uh, the supervisor who was here then sent a letter to all those residential property owners that had been in the district. Indicating that they would be uh, they would be removed. And with that, the referendum finally passed 32 to 29, three votes. 
make no mistake, that referendum would not have passed if the residential property owners were not excluded. We'll let the attorneys have a over if what's going on now is legal or not. But I know one thing, it doesn't pass the smell test, but before a drop of sewer even flows through that lawn, we're now talking about some process to force these residential properties into a system that they did not get a vote for. Don't misunderstand, I'm an engineer, I'm in favor of sewer. I wish we could bring sewer through the whole town, we could make life easier, but you don't have sewer through the whole town, and you don't because it's not affordable. The Route 9 commercial properties voted for the sewer, and they voted for the cost because it drastically increases the value of their property. I'm not an appraiser, but I think a good argument can be made that it decreases the value of residential properties in this instance. And now we're hearing from the engineers that the industrial park force made that all this next to is nearing capacity. And we need more flow in order to help pay for upgrades to that force main. It could be settled on, on the backs of, of residential properties. We did not vote for this. The town could not find a project to work and they were included. I ask that you not approve the proposed moratorium and you let those that want the sewer, that voted for the sewer, and these properties benefit from the sewer, pay for the sewer. Thank you for your time. And I'll just kind of sit on the little back legs. You can put it wherever you want. Can you hear me? Yes. Can I take this off? Sure. All right, thank you. Uh, Luke Michaels, Michael's Group Homes. I submitted an email to the town board yesterday. Uh, so we did receive it. All right, so I'll just summarize real quick. Uh, it looks to be that the new law that's up at the front does address some new changes. So this is updated, correct? From the last one that was submitted? No. The law hasn't been updated. The wrong one was put on the website before the notice of public hearing. Okay. I this see. is always the one that the board So the current, the current law doesn't affect any approved projects. Okay. Well, that's good. Fully approved. Yes. Okay. Great. Um, so the in my letter you see um, the Route Nine commercial properties. Obviously, of course that would pass. Of course the sewer referendum would pass in that case. Sewer to those commercial properties is infinitely valuable. It changes the whole landscape of the entire commercial uh, real estate. And on a residential end, we have other alternatives. And in rural, we have perfectly suitable and viable soils for second systems. Um, in the case of a couple of projects that are been in front of the board, planning board and submitted are a couple of projects that have uh, already planned for second systems, site designs have already been done. A lot of time, energy, and funds have been spent on these projects going forward with uh, septic systems, which are perfectly viable for residential use. Uh, the costs for sewer, and a lot of these are variable. We don't know them right now, but we should go through exactly what uh, is entailed with bringing sewer to residential properties. So first is to get to the properties, the developer has to extend and improve the new town infrastructure all the way to the new sites. Once they get to the site, the developer has to put in the new road for all the new homes that are gonna come in and we have to run sewer through all those new, uh, through the new development. After that, there's likely hookup fees that the developer pays for tying into the new sewer. We don't know what those are yet, I don't believe. Um, fourth, the entire sewer system is low pressure. So each home is gonna have a grinder pump. Uh, a cost we're pretty certain of a grinder pump, new grinder pump hooked up, installed, dug in, put in is about $7,500. And after that, post construction, post sale of the new home, uh, the post construction costs considered are the sewer tax fees the new properties would face. And I don't believe we know what those are yet. I did see um, a calculation of sorts that would talk about the sewer fee being uh, $2,839 that would be based on $300,000 appraised value of the home. So that's an annual tax. Uh, one, I would say that that tax would be significantly more because a new home 
these days with soaring material costs, amongst all other things, inflation in general, uh, the home, homes are going to come in much higher than 300000 So that will relate to the sewer tax being more as well. A question we have to ask ourselves is, you know, these new people moving in, who's going to tell them about the sewer tax? What are they going to know? Are they going to know when they get their first property bill, that they hook up and they have $3,000 a year in taxes just for sewer? It's going to be more than that. I don't know that if we're going to open up a community that I can have a buyer come into our office, we're going to sell them a new home, and I can look them in the eye and say, your home's going to cost $300,000 and not say anything about a $3,000 tax every year. So the question is, who's going to tell them about that? Is that going to be public knowledge? And then once it is, uh, it's going to really halt and slow down new home sales from a parent's <laughs> perspective. Uh, all those costs to consider, there is a viable alternative option, a septic system, which can be installed in the town of Moreau with the beautiful soils here for less than $5,000. So in a time when home affordability is one of the most pressing issues throughout any town, not just in Moreau, anywhere, building uh, costs, land costs, approval costs, everything, uh, new, homes, new home prices are skyrocketing. Why are we gonna add more cost to those homes and, uh, and only make home affordability worse. Um, after that, you know, just, just this to finish up. Um, if all we have 10 seconds, just so. Okay, well then my, my, my ask would be then, any projects that have been in front of the town, don't include the moratorium. We've already been down the road, we've spent way too much in funds, time, energy, all those things. It's gonna, it's gonna happen, look to the new sites, Unfortunately, I don't agree with it. I don't think it's going to be good. But, uh, you know, don't punish the sites for better terms. So thank you. Thank you. Would anyone else like to address the board? Sure. Thank you. Um, good evening. My name is Thomas Romain. I'm an attorney of White Master and Hanna, and I'm counsel for Sewer Builders and Related Entities. Um, I just want to first thank the board for the opportunity to speak at the hearing. Um, initially, I just wanted to say uh, thank you for Carla for pointing out the discrepancy with the local law. There was a small change to the proposal of the law from the version that was originally available on the town's website, um, and that we attached with our December 17th letter. Um, so I reviewed the revised and current version of the proposal of the law, um, and I just want to put on the record that our comments and arguments in our December 17th letter apply equally um, and fully to the revised current version of the local law. Um, not to uh, restate everything we put in the letter, but I just wanted to bring up a few points before the board here tonight. My client, Sarone, has had an application pending before the town for 49 lot subdivision off Lennox Boulevard at the entrance of the town park. They've been before the town since December of 2020. To date, the project has undergone secret review by the town planning board, which resulted in the determination by the planning board that the project would not result in any potential adverse environmental impacts under seeker and has received preliminary plan approval. We've also prepared a map plan report and petitioned the town board for water district extension. In addition, we've applied to the New York State Department of Health for realty subdivision approval. The last two pieces of the puzzle to, in order for Sarone to break ground. As a brief, brief, brief background, the reason we're here tonight is that the proposed moratorium as drafted applies to any project within a half mile of the existing sewer and that has more than 10 units. The Jacoby Farm subdivision has 49 lots and a portion of the project is within a half mile of that sewer. What's not included in the moratorium is an exemption for projects who have approvals already and are already pending before the town. Since this project was contemplated and since we've been before the town, the project has been <coughs> proposed septic for the following reasons. The project is not within a sewer district. The town code does not require public sewer connection in the, the R2 district. The, cost prohibitive nature of utilizing public sewer, which in our letter sets forth that would be approximately a million dollars compared to $170,000 for septic. And the soil composition, as been previously stated, is ideal for septic. As drafted, the proposed moratorium would stop this project dead in its tracks. 
And unless the town board believes it's going to be able to come up with a solution in the next six months, the moratorium will likely be extended into the future and further damaging my client and this project. So based on the arguments set forth in our comment letter, we respectfully request the town amend the proposed moratorium language and exempt the project, allowing Sorrell to complete the planning board review process and other necessary approvals, or two, reject the proposed moratorium in its entirety. Thank you. Thank you very much. Believe Mr. Goodbye, was nice. Thank you, everybody. Sorry, you get it. Merry Christmas and happy holidays. Uh, I don't know how that's coming through with the mask. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. All right. Uh, I've got a few questions and comments, and I guess the questions maybe somebody can get back to after because. I know the intent of the hearing is to hear comments, but my, my first observation is that this, this local law affects everybody from Town Hall all the way down to exit 17. It's within a half mile of, of the sewer lane. Uh, when district extension number five of sewer district one was created, that people were told that we're going to encourage growth, expand the district, bring more users in to get the cost down and future growth. Uh, I'm anxious to ascertain how much actual assessed value of growth we, we have had directly related to the sewer. But, uh, but this, I believe, is is going to discourage growth and it's going to encourage growth in all the other areas of the town. Anything that's either not in the district or beyond the half mile limit. So uh, I can understand that the town now needs some time to do some evaluation, but uh, moratoriums historically end up extended because it's a place sometimes progress moves on during the moratorium. Um, in the notice uh, under 125-1, the purpose and intent says, in part, uh, for the town to consider potentially adopting changes to its zoning code to address new circumstances not addressed by its current laws. My question is, what are these new circumstances? Something has triggered this. It has the appearances of lacking capacity. And, and if that's so, I think those things are true. I know the town's looking at several options, the one existing contract and, and the uh, Saratoga County story. I did have some questions about about that. What I read, uh, a little bit I read in the papers, and I did put a call on the town hall two days ago, which hasn't been returned. Because I, I, I just don't feel I have the information to make some of the appropriate comments. Uh, and then it goes on and the purpose and intent and and, and cites the comprehensive plan and the desire for the neighborhoods on either side of the Route 9 course. But this moratorium is going much further than beyond just the uh, either side of the Route 9 court. Uh, the, uh, Uh, we, we've had some, some great growth over the last decade or so. Uh, we've had some new subdivisions that, that have been built out and been successful and adds to the quality of the housing in, in the town. Uh, you've had a, quite a bit of increased assessed valuation, uh, which helps you with your budget and your tax rates. Uh, but also the growth is included to a Tremendous increase in sales tax revenue, which is important when you do your budgets. Uh, but moratoriums send out shockwaves 
to a lot of people that have invested in, in the community. Uh, I think if you're going to do anything on a moratorium, I get more complaints on the apartments. And maybe we should have done a moratorium on, on apartments. And whereas we've done just the opposite, and actually had PUDs come in front of administrations and they've increased the density. In there. So it, it, it has the appearance of a capacity issue, and that's all it is. The moratorium may not be necessary or may be easy to, to resolve and get it behind you. But, uh, just to get that on you, uh, that tends to. Uh, I'm about to. Uh, that, okay. that pretty much summarizes what I wanted to say. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, any more questions? Uh, Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Good evening. Good evening. My name is John Small, one of the principals of Small Novus. Uh, I just want to check if everybody can see the letter that me and my uh, client have submitted to the town. Yes. I was well this evening. Yes. Uh, once again, I know sometimes when you go through the letter, I do want to, I, not to say apologize, but I would never really want to sue a town that we do a lot of work with. We have several other properties in this town that we continue to develop. But this project started September 20th, September 12th, 2020. Where we are now is in the same spot, but basically with a preliminary pool. We put another six months on this. We can't build to the end of next season, which is September 2022. Now that's two years, and we lose another building season. We personally have, I think, 10, eight or 10 lots left in Merle. I don't know what Mr. Michael says, by the way. I do want to go on record. I support our obviously our attorney, Michael says, but what are we supposed to do? If this more terms in place, we have no property left in Morocco, what are we supposed to do? Just keep paying property taxes and not be able to build? We've had a lot of meetings in this office and with the town officials on what you guys wanted on that project. We spent substantial money in a design that is appeasing to the town, the planning board. That entrance is going to be beautiful when we're done. And we're just going to keep them prolonged and more and more costs added to this. Attorney fees, engineering fees, and above and beyond the sewer, we're going to have to redesign the whole project. And what is that for us? So just please see it through our eyes. We spent a lot of time, a lot of money, a lot of effort. We do a lot of business in this town. We're bringing more business to this town. We've got a tremendous piece of property on Route 9 that we still went through and purchased, even though we're moving our uh, potential facility to the industrial park. We have another property behind here. We're also in talks with doing something else with another property at the end of Buffalo Road. So, obviously, we oppose the moratorium. Please consider any project that was before you to move forward with their uh, uh, progress in the town. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Good evening. My name is Mary Beth Slevin. Now, I did submit letters to the board uh, on behalf of our head members and also for SRM uh, TJM. Um, I wanted to add, though, um, one of the things that I would ask this board to consider these projects have both been through significant review of the planning board. They each received a negative declaration of the speaker with respect to the reviews that they went through. Both have preliminary approval to move forward with the next phase of approval for those projects. That has uh, uh, significance in terms of how this board looks at that. The negative declaration means that projects do not have a negative impact on the, the environment. It also means that in that analysis, the, board, the planning board had to look at whether there was any implication with respect to existing town infrastructure or quite frankly for proposed town infrastructure. None was found. Both projects were found to be able to be developed as proposed with septic systems without any adverse impact. That is an important consideration, and I believe that it's something that the board should take into consideration in determining whether to move forward with the moratorium, at least with respect to those projects. It can exempt those projects from the moratorium, and we believe that it should. And we appreciate it if you would take that into consideration. Thank you. Thank you. 
<coughs> uh, anyone else wish to be heard on the record for the public hearing? Uh, does anybody wish to continue their comments uh, that have already spoken? If not, uh, that ends up being a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. Uh, all in favor? All right. All right. Any votes? The motion carries. Thank you very much, everyone, for your comments. Uh, the, uh, they're taken seriously, um, and I think, uh, I know I've met with most of the speakers that at one point or another, uh, in relation to some of the projects uh, they're referring to, and you know, I appreciate, uh, the developer's willingness to work with the town as we, uh, move forward, uh, in reviewing our land use regulations. So the uh, public hearing portion is over uh, as advertised in the uh, posting. We're going to have a special board meeting now for deliberation and consideration as to whether we want to move forward with adoption of the moratorium. So uh, at this time, I will open it up to town board members for their thoughts, um, recommendations, comments as to uh, where you would like to go from here. Wish to speak. I'll uh, add a couple comments here. Um, I, I feel as if the, the you know my support of the moratorium where we got how we got here tonight was to give us the six months that we had talked about that we needed at the board to uh, figure out some more of like uh, Supervisor Kuznir said with the land use regulation, um, but so I would support going forward with the moratorium, but I also feel as if we can't, if we can't get our stuff together in six months, I'll go on the record here, I don't know if we would want to or could extend it. Um, and if we can't figure it out in six months, we should let it run out. That's what goes my thoughts. Any other comments? Yeah. Um, Council member. Yeah. You know, I, as far as the moratorium goes, I understand that we have responsibility as a board to look out for the, the best welfare of everybody in the town, including you know, any development in the town. I'm all for looking over his own comments, uh, adjusting when we need to make adjustments. Uh, Reviewing with it and making sure that uh, you know, we're heading in the right direction. My problem is with this moratorium. Um, we're looking at, at forcing people. The, the main thing here that was talked about is, is, is having developers looking to the sewer and to the sewer district. You know, as far as you know, that goes, that's, that's a fight for another day. But as far as the moratorium goes, the people have plans on the board right now. Or before the planning board. I can't, in good conscience, support the moratorium that is going to take these developers who have their surroundings. December of 2020, this project has been on, on the table. He's been to you know the planning boards numerous times. He's put his plans out there, he's addressed his plans, he's done everything possible. And now what we're looking to do is stop the clock. Change the rules and then let it back in, in if he wants to follow the rules. That's just plain wrong. That's just plain wrong. There's other people who've been before the planning board and, and, and they've got their plan. You know, making these plans for these small businesses, and these are small family owned businesses. One of them, one of them is located right here in town of Rose. It's wrong. He's been a good neighbor, a good developer. And, and for us to sit here and, and now want to change the rules. I don't want to change the rules. I want to make some rules. I want to go and, and look down and look at our, look at our zoning laws and adjust what we have to adjust. But to change the rules of midstream is just not correct. You know, these, these, these people, these businesses, like I say, these are small businesses, family businesses. 
spend a lot of money and a lot of time to get their to get their their projects figured out as far as time wise. I mean, they have to time these things to keep people working to, to, to keep money flowing. This is all something that, that has to be done. And they've been doing it for over a year now. And now all of a sudden we want to stop them because we want to force maybe something on them that, that, that wasn't part of the rules to begin with. And I can't support that. I support the Canadian design laws. I don't have a problem with that. And like I say, as far as where we go from there, that's, that's another case. So for the fact, I just can't laugh the moratorium that has taken developers and put them in time out after they've already, already submitted their plan. So I, I wouldn't support anything that uh, doesn't exempt people, developers who have something before the board right now. That's it. Uh, I'll share a couple of the comments if I met Council Member Van Passel. Um, well, I'll probably be repeating some of what was said by both of the my fellow board members. So, um, the, the uh, I'm only one board member at the end of the day, I've only had one vote, but I'll also have one record um, that um, if we move on this moratorium tonight, I'll do all I can. To not let that get past six months um, unless something significantly changes, I do not support um, extending it past the six months. We, we cannot kick the can down the road and uh, not move quickly because I, I, I have a high regard for business owners and entrepreneurs that are very pro on economic development. I do have a concern about the the uh, impact that this decision that you might make tonight might have. Uh, but I will get my full support. Now, I, I don't know if we're really changing the rules. Um, that, that, that's one way of, of articulating it. I, I think that um, from the great fortune of the growth that we had, or maybe an accelerated growth uh, that we didn't anticipate, um, that there's merit in taking a hard look at the impact of that. And I think that we county uh, planning board's position strongly supported it, if not encouraged it. We just need a little bit of time to take a look at the, uh, at the uh, comprehensive uh, plan and so forth. Um, so I'm all for, for doing the right thing. There's a tough balance that we all have as board members to do the right thing for our taxpayers and our residents. And that is also taking into consideration those that do business in the town. So, um, I, I was supportive in, uh, in our prior discussions about um, putting the moratorium in place. We need to move quickly uh, as a board. There was talk tonight about, um, and I respect everybody's position, um, there was talk about tying this board's decision to the Route 9 sewer corridor, and I was very much part of the Route 9 corridor sewer project, but I understand that it was uh, geared around economic development and the commercial zone. But I can tell you as one board member, when we made had discussion about uh, this moratorium, it was, it was, it was, it had nothing to do with the reasons why we got that sewer, um, that sewer project approved. I know why we exempted the residential, but no question that, that we probably wouldn't have gotten approved, but that, that did not weigh into, at least for me, any decision about where we are tonight. Um, but, and they're not late. Um, and then I think that there's some other comments, and I'm not a, a builder nor an engineer, but I know people, and I personally was involved in, in, in uh, trying to put septic system in property in the very area we're talking about. I mean, the soils are good, they're also so good that you have to, in many cases, uh, medium and, and I didn't find quotes uh, quotes in any of the numbers that you're talking about for what it costs to put in source of septic system. But again, that's just uh, something I have to look into further, so I'm comfortable. But um, at the end of the day, uh, um, I guess the, the summary of my position is that we need to, I believe we as a board, we owe it to the town uh, and the residents to take a hard look at this, but we need to move quickly. Thank you. Any other comments? No, I think people are doing more so. Thank you. Thank you.
Sure, thank you. Uh, appreciate the, the board's comments. Uh, I have a few uh, I'd like to uh, put in the record. Um, you know, I, I've served this community, I think it was my 20th year, uh, either a council member or a town supervisor. Uh, I was instrumental uh, working with my colleagues on the board at the time to successfully put forward um, a sewer plan for our commercial corridor. Um, not sure uh, why that's part of the debate on, uh, on a moratorium, uh, which does nothing other than to give the town board time. Uh, I've had I've heard comments uh, that uh, you know this is in relation to capacity. Uh, I would point out that uh, our sewer uh, service does will not just serve the commercial quarter. We're already serving other two parts of the town. So I don't know why it's all being uh, tied to um, the Route Nine project, uh, which. Uh, will have a phenomenal benefit economically and otherwise for our community. I know Mr. Gathaw asked a question, uh, I'm not sure you know, what the growth has done for a commercial corridor in the uh, sewer district extension. I can tell you just in that corridor, uh, I think it was last year, I don't have the numbers off the top of my head, but this year we are approaching $10 million in increased assessed value which uh, anyone who's been following the sewer project recognizes that the assessed value of the, of the district uh, plays a role in what the rates will eventually be. Uh, the greater the assessed value over time with increased development benefits all users for sewer. So uh, that's a good thing. Uh, but back to the moratorium. Uh, the mor moratorium is just that, a moratorium. We're not changing the rules. Uh, we're not forcing anything down anyone's throat. We're buying the town board time to review our existing regulations uh, to ensure that they're current and appropriate for where we are with growth in our community. And um, within the verbiage of the moratorium, as we do uh, regularly, we have provisions in there if there's uh, circumstances that warrant it. Or this town board can provide a variance uh, if anyone wishes to apply to the town board. Now, I've heard comments that uh, we have approved projects. This moratorium doesn't approve, doesn't apply to approved projects at all. So uh, I don't know where the disconnect is there saying that uh, you know, don't impact uh, our approved projects. Uh, it does not. So uh, I think it's the appropriate thing to do that we move forward with adoption of the moratorium. Um, you know, obviously with any moratorium that I've been involved with, uh, we have done our due diligence to ensure that they don't extend any longer than they have to. Uh, this particular moratorium is for a maximum of six months. Uh, it could be far less than that. Uh, we don't know, it depends where we as a board decide we want to go as we review our current regulations. So I'm supportive of the moratorium at this time, uh, and uh, I would recommend that the board take it up this evening. I'd like to add a couple more comments. Um, you know, this isn't just for the projects now on COVID Road and uh, Lennox Road. It's for the future of all the lands within a half a mile of our new soon to be working sewer of thing. Um, it's not to put on ice anybody who has something going on right now, um, anybody you know, in particular, but it came up with the timing of where we're at, and it was the right thing for me to support all. It is the right thing for me to support ultimately. So, you know, um, we're not trying to stop one family from continuing the family business, because that was kind of dismayed from one of our board members here. Um, we are also looking out for the future of the town of Um Maybe this will be over in six months, maybe four months, maybe five months, who knows. Mm -hmm. 
discussion by the board. All right, just one other comment if I could, I never mentioned it. Um, and I, I understand and respect the, the, the negative declaration that was referenced by uh, uh, Council was here representing one of our clients. But I also know that there was a portion of that nine sewer project that was tied to environmental impact. It was not just economic development. And it happened to be um, over in that area. So that, that way to my thoughts to why we need to just take a quick closer look. That's Okay. Or I'd like to move forward this evening. I would like to move forward. I don't think we should move forward. I'm just encouraging my fellow board members if we do that. Councillor, what uh, what's the next step? Board has a complete secret. Here, the uh, public hearing has closed, but uh, if, I, if I allow you to speak, everyone in this room is going to be have the same right. You're going to have a public forum during the regular. We just special. have a public forum. It's a, it's a special board meeting. A special board meeting on the moratorium. Is there any public forum? We, we have that. I just wanted to point out that. The only reason they brought up Route 9 is because it's in your own language. There's a purpose and intent on the moratorium. And the other thing was 125 3 says no application for building permit site and approval, special use permits, subdivision approval, any other municipal level shall be considered for development of subdivision street in North County. Units located within a half mile of the existing sewer main. I interpreted that that meant everybody was going to approve the amount. So if, if I'm interpreting wrong, I, I'm, I'm glad to have a clarification. I appreciate clarification on that too because there's a date in there, November 23rd. So if we can get clarification on that, that would be excellent. What I understood is not a type of group project, but the language looks differently. Can you let me respond? Sure. Okay. And, and then uh, to be clear, the public hearing is over and it's in the hands of the board. Oh, and I no, my I'm trying to do your Go ahead. So 125-3 specifically says you cannot apply for building permits or site plan or special use or subdivision or municipal approval for development of subdivisions. If you're looking at it, it's for the, the development of the subdivision, not for the individual home in an already approved subdivision. That's fully approved, no conditions, no preliminary approval, the way that it's written right now. With respect, uh, Luke, to your comment on the November 23rd date, that was to exempt anyone that had been already received their building permits prior to the November 23rd or the issuance of CEOs prior to November 23rd within any of those subdivisions. So if there's phase one or phase two or phase three, phase one was done, phase two is not done, your, your um, building permits and CEOs are, are exempt from them. The point for, of this is to make sure that any subdivision that has full and final approval from the town of Morrow, this is not a fight of that. Any subdivision that does not have full and final approval, this applies to them. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor. And, uh, you know, I just, I, before we move on with the uh, seeker, I also want to draw attention to uh, the correspondence from Saratoga County Planning Board. Uh, as uh, everyone's well aware, uh, they either approve or disapprove of uh, these projects. It's been, it's been their purview and statutory requirements to do so. And for some time, they have strongly recommended that the town of Rowe and these large projects uh, take advantage of any sewer infrastructure or municipal water if it's available. And again, in the review here, they're they look at their comments uh, and they specifically relate to the projects. I think probably everybody in this room is 
representing in some fashion. Uh, you know, they made the comment that the correspondent was to make note of proximity to the public sewer service and to encourage development of subdivisions with municipal sewer. So, you know, it's just not us looking at it, it's the county that is looking at it as well. And so uh, that's another reason for uh, the town board taking this uh, issue very seriously and uh, promulgating a, uh, a moratorium so that uh, we ensure that we're doing uh, what's best for the town of Monroe and its residents. So with that, uh, Councillor, we will move forward with Secret. Okay. And would you like to lead us in that? Yes, I can. You have before you parts one, two, and three of the EAF. Part one, you had before you at the time that you indicated the fact that the public hearing. Uh, so, part one merely indicates that this is for the adoption of rule number number seven. And so, that part. I think it's question one and one. Yes, then you stick to the last page and the supervisor signs it. That's part one. So that is complete. Um, part two, you have before you, as we have done in the past. Um, part two is where you look at this and determine whether there will be any sort of environmental impact by going through 11 questions. Mr. Supervisor, given this, um, given this matter, would you like me to read each of the questions and request? that the board give an answer, or would you like to um, go through and just indicate whether there are any that would be a large to moderate to large impact? Uh, I would suggest uh, that you ask questions. Okay. Will the proposed action, let me uh, go back, the, your answer that you all have before you, your answer could be no or small impact, or moderate to large impact? So question number one, will the proposed action create a material conflict with an adopted land use plan or zoning regulation? No. No. Number two, will the proposed action result in a change in the use or intensity of use of land? No. Number three, will the proposed action impair the character or quality of the existing community? No. Number four, will the proposed action have an impact on the environmental characteristics that caused the establishment of a critical environmental area? No. Number five, will the proposed action result in an adverse change in the existing level of traffic or affect existing infrastructure for mass transit, biking, or walkway? No. Number six, will the proposed action cause an increase in the use of energy and it fails to incorporate reasonably available energy conservation or renewable energy opportunities. No. Number seven, will the proposed action impact public private water supplies? No. no. Will the proposed action impact public or private wastewater treatment utilities? No. no. Number eight, will the proposed action impair the character or quality of important historic, archaeological, architectural, or aesthetic resources? No, no. Will the proposed action result in an adverse change to natural resources? No. Will the proposed action result in an increase in the potential for erosion, flooding, or drainage problems? No. Will the proposed action create a hazard to environmental resources or human health? No. That is uh, part two. The board has answered no or small impact may occur to each of the 11 questions on part two. The next section is the determination of significance, part three. It, it, this is the uh, part of Seeker where the town board advises whether or not it believes that there will be a significant environmental impact based on its responses to part two. What is the board's pleasure? Does it believe that this will um, result in a significant adverse environmental impact or that it will not? Yeah. So we, the, we would check the box that indicates it will not. Um, does the board wish to issue a negative declaration? Yes. yes. If that is the board's uh, decision, the negative declaration mm -hmm. is included in the resolution for adoption. Thank you. And I believe the clerk has the resolution for adoption. Thank you. And you are. 
Sure. Resolution Town Board Town of Monroe, adoption of Local Law 7 of 2021, adding Chapter 125 to the Code of the Town of Monroe entitled Temporary Moratorium on Building Permits, Subdivision Review, Site Plan Review, or Other Review of Subdivisions of More than 10 Residential Dwellings Located Within One Half Mile of Existing Sewer Main Within the Town of Monroe. Whereas the Town Board of the Town of Monroe is considering the adoption of Local Law Number 7 of 2021, which if adopted as proposed, adds chapter 125 entitled a temporary moratorium on building permit, subdivision review, site plan review, or other review of subdivisions of more than 10 residential dwellings located within one half mile of an existing sewer main within the town of Moreau. And whereas the board finds that the adoption of local law number seven of 2021 is in the best interest of the town and it is necessary to provide for the health, safety, and welfare of town residents and property owners. And whereas the board finds that the adoption of local law number seven of 2021 is a necessary and proper exercise of authority by the board. And whereas the authority for the enactment of this local law is found in section 10.1i of the municipal home rule law. And whereas pursuant to section 20 of the municipal home rule law, a public hearing on the proposed adoption of local law number seven of 2021 was properly noticed in the newspaper and posted and was duly conducted on December 21st, 2021 at the town municipal complex. And whereas the board has considered the public comment provided before and those made at the public hearing. And whereas the board serving as lead agency for this unlisted action under seeker reviewed a short environmental assessment form and determined that the action does not present any adverse environmental impacts. And whereas the Saratoga County Planning Board has issued a determination of no significant countywide or air community impact associated with this local law. And whereas after thorough review and deliberation, the board proposes to adopt local law number seven of 2021. And whereas the attorney for the town has prepared the necessary documents for filing this local law with the Secretary of State, including the text of the law itself. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the board hereby adopts local law number 7 of 2021, which amends the law as stated above. And be it further resolved that the board adopts and authorizes the filing of a negative declaration. And be it further resolved that the board hereby authorizes the town clerk and the attorney for the town to make such minor modifications to the local law documents as they deem necessary, and thereafter are directed to execute and file the said documents as required by law and to take all of the necessary actions for the promulgation thereof. Thank you, Leanne. And there's some like to So, second uh, discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Uh, any opposed? Yeah. Uh, motion passes for the one council member uh, down in here in the back. And uh, this time I made a motion to uh, end the special order. So, second, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Thank you very much, everyone. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. Uh, Sir, how are you? Okay. Yeah.